Hello and welcome back to the Eyes of Old Gaming channel for another game review, where we try to find out, is it still worth it? This time we have a platformer from the Assassin's Creed franchise. That's right, we're on to the second release in the Assassin's Creed Chronicles series, Assassin's Creed India. If you'd rather start with the first release in the series, I have done a review of Assassin's Creed Chronicles China, and I'll make sure there's a pop-up or a link in the description so you can check that one out first. But we're not talking about China today. Today we're in India. This one was released in 2016 and was developed by Climax Studios and published by, of course, Ubisoft. So what is the Assassin's Creed Chronicles series? Is this particular title still worth it to pick up? Or was it ever? Well, if you found yourself asking those questions, you're in luck, because that's exactly what we try to find out in this review series, trying to answer the most important question when it comes to games. Is it still worth it for you? Let's get into it. So just like the first release in the series, this one is really focused on the location to keep it as a distinct entry. The setting this time is going to be 19th century India during the real-world Anglo-Sikh Wars, which was called this because it was a conflict between the Sikh Empire and the East India Company. This time, those dastardly Templars have managed to integrate themselves within the East India Company, and of course are making all kinds of trouble for the protagonist, Arbaz Mir, who is apparently also the main character in a graphic novel, though I hadn't heard of it until I made this review. If you're interested, it's called the Assassin's Creed Brahmin. Anyway, you're basically going to be traveling through different locations set in India, such as temples, palaces, urban conflict zones, and others while fighting Templars, East India Company soldiers, and even the Sikh Empire soldiers. And so what are we comparing this one to? This felt almost identical to Assassin's Creed China, but with an India reskin. There are a couple of minor differences, which we'll go into a little bit in the mechanics section, but really if you enjoyed the China experience and want more Assassin's Creed platforming, I'll save you some time and let you know this one is definitely a good pick for you, because they just feel so similar to each other. Aside from its Chronicles series counterpart, the rest of the Assassin's Creed franchise is also going to have some similarities. This one is set in the same world, and so the lore and plot is going to build on the main franchise games. If you're a fan of the earlier releases, really anything prior to the historical RPG series of the Assassin's Creed games, then the Chronicles editions can be a nice change of plot as we focus more on being an assassin taking on the Templars again, which is really the fundamentals of where Assassin's Creed started. Going outside of the franchise, if I look to games I've covered on the channel already to give you some idea, we can look at Little Nightmares. It's also a 2.5D game with a focus on stealth and puzzle solving, so you will find some connection there. In Assassin's Creed though, instead of stealth being the only option, there's plenty of alternatives for engaging with enemies directly. Puzzles will be much similar than in Little Nightmares, and the general feel will be different as the Assassin's Creed series as a whole tends to be geared more on the light fantasy elements within a more realistic world as opposed to the artistic and exaggerated approach taken in Little Nightmares. And that's all I've really got for you. Of course there's others out there like the earlier Prince of Persia games for example, but if I start going down the compare this to every platformer released road, we're going to be here all day. So in terms of mechanics, we have a pretty big deviation from games in the main series. The Chronicles series is platforming, which is definitely different from the standard Assassin's Creed approach of open world. This one is a 2.5D platformer, meaning instead of just the standard planes of movement in a typical platformer, there's also some limited movement in the third dimension. Since it's not the full movement, it's considered 2.5 instead of 3D. Just like with China, this one is very linear, or on the rails, and only has some very limited exploration available in the zones. Usually all you're going to be able to do is a main objective, maybe a secondary objective, and find some small secret area or difficult to reach room within a zone of play. The Chronicles games do allow for direct confrontation, however the protagonists tend to be a little bit more fragile than their main series counterparts. In other words, there's a greater reliance on stealth to complete zones. 
This will typically involve hiding in specific areas and attempting to learn the patrol patterns of guards in order to quickly duck between hiding spots. If you do engage in enemy combat, with a bit of practice it's not too difficult, but you can quickly become overwhelmed if more than one enemy is alerted and gangs up on you. In terms of your equipment or abilities, we have a very similar approach to China. Whistling can be done to distract or have guards move to a specific area to investigate. Smoke bombs and noisemakers come back, and the big difference is going to be your chakrams. They operate similar to the throwing knives in China, but the new gimmick is that they bounce off the walls. Really, they're going to serve the same purpose as in China, typically to interact with things outside of the player's reach, such as cutting ropes. Pickpocketing for ammunition or specific mission-related items, assassinations, and guards' cones of sight also make a return in this entry. Graphics are going to be really quite similar to China in terms of quality, though with a new Indian aesthetic. Environments are going to feel a lot more brightened up than China, and things such as swinging your blade creates a really neat pattern in the air to remind you that you're in India this time, and you get a satisfying red mist when assassinating enemies. The artistic between-mission cutscenes have returned, and this time we get treated to a brightened up and colorfully vibrant Indian style of aesthetic. What's setting this apart from everything else out there that you can play? Well, it's Assassin's Creed, but a platformer. And that's really about it. It's a pretty simple game in terms of story and actual gameplay. You're going to be doing some parkour, some assassinations, and a bit of puzzle solving. But really, it's mostly just watching for patterns in the guards' patrols and duck between hiding spots. There are a couple of unique locations and some precursor areas that change it up. But again, it's mostly just timing your movements. If you're the type of person who preferred the story of the older Assassin's Creed, you might like this, as it seems a little more closely related to those rather than the historical RPGs that have been coming out more recently. We do have a focus on being an assassin and fighting Templars. However, there aren't really sanctioned assassination contracts like before. This is more of a personal quest of the protagonist, rather than being a cog in the assassin's organization and carrying out the missions as ordered. The nice thing is, I didn't run into any bugs, crashes, or glitches in the playthrough, and everything seemed to work as it should. As with most Ubisoft games, sound is pretty good. Music fits the setting, and voice acting is delivered pretty well in my opinion. I'll play some examples here for you though, so you can make your own decision on it. Thank you, my friend. You're a tough beast, you know that? Who took you? What did they want? <laughs> there it is. Now to reach it. Unarmed and in areas I shouldn't be, full of palace guards. This is going to be fun. Gate is not guarded. This should be easy. That mortar fire is getting closer. I must keep moving. Quick subjective disclaimer and message for people new to the channel. Basically, for the first part of the video, I always try to stay as objective as I can and keep any major story spoilers out. That way you can decide for yourself if the game is right for you. Now I'm going to go deeper into my own personal experience and if I enjoyed it. Keep in mind that whether I enjoyed it or not means very little as to if you will or won't. Not all games are for everyone, and something that you love might be the same thing another gamer thinks is absolute trash. And this is a good thing, there's always something for someone. However, that also means I'm not giving a number rating, or something like that, because in a subjective medium like games, it serves no purpose at all. Okay, let's get into this. So did I enjoy this game, and do I recommend it? It's pretty standard, really. Well, you know, it's okay. 
The storyline is pretty basic, the gameplay is pretty basic, the graphics are not bad for a platformer, all around it's just fine. I wouldn't say there's much standout here, I didn't think it's a revolutionary step in the platformer genre, nor is it my preferred Assassin's Creed experience. I do like the return to fundamentals pitting assassins against Templars, but in the end it doesn't have the complex hierarchy of assassination targets to take down and dismantle the same way as the main series games, which really in my opinion is one of the most satisfying parts of the Assassin's Creed franchise. Honestly this just feels like a more modern Prince of Persia platformer, which to be fair I really enjoyed those classic Prince of Persia games back in the day. The thing is though, games have come a long way since then and evolved quite a bit, and aside from it handling a little better and the graphics being prettied up, this one just seems like it came right out of that time period and was dropped here. Hyperbole aside, I know I'm probably sounding very critical, but I didn't dislike the game. I just think it's a hard one to say, yes, you need to go out and purchase this right now, when there's so many other games out there to try. If you want something casual and slow paced, this could be a good choice for you. That's actually what I enjoyed about this one. Basically when I was just winding down for the day, I would just throw this on and play through a zone or so. And it was good for that. There's no complex storyline to keep track of during sessions, no decisions to make, no world to explore, and sometimes you don't want all that. You just want a simple game to plunk away at. As with the other Chronicles games, this is going to be shorter than other games in the Assassin's Creed series, though a shorter experience is not atypical of modern platformers. I would say that this game, and again it's similar with most modern platformers, it's easier than classic platformer games. That's not necessarily a bad thing. As I mentioned before, I mostly just use this game as a chill out, relaxing game. And so having an experience that was much less intense and a little easier to play through was what just hit the spot for me. I think this one is likely not going to appeal to everyone, but it could be a good choice for platformer fans and people who enjoy the Assassin's Creed lore and just want to experience a new story set in that world. So I hope you enjoyed this look at Assassin's Creed Chronicles India. Have you already played through the game? Let me know down in the comments if you enjoyed it or not, and if you agreed with my own opinion on it. If the video was helpful or entertaining, please give me a like here to let me know, and also consider subscribing to the channel. I make and upload a variety of gaming videos, not just reviews, and I'd love to have you join the community and help direct the future of the channel. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching today, and until next time, take care. Unarmed and in areas I shouldn't be, full of palace guards. This is going to be fun.